Let's continue exploring function editor. And what we're going to look on an input and custom dependency output nodes. To access them, we need to go ahead create exam uh, sample terrain. So I'm just going to create normal terrain right here. And we'll just go ahead, right click, and let's go to edit object. In the terrain editor, if you don't have a function open, you can just go inside the function and says edit function that will open our function editor for the terrain. So inside the terrain, let's reposition a couple things. I just I don't want that way. I just want to stretch them out nodes. Just a little bit to refresh. Our input nodes is on the left. Our output or control it nodes is on the right. So we have information or data come from the left, travel through all of these nodes that we can manipulate and change data as we want it. And this is what we're going to affect. So on this one is very simple. We have it based on position per each pixel. We are adjusting, taking vector selection. We multiplied by vector each of them. We applying this to our simple fractal and we'll change altitude. So it is taking on a position. Everything will be probably flat uh, square on the ground, but this is what might modify creating altitude for us. Then we have altitude production. So this is just overlook. If we look inside the input, you notice right here, we have an external dependency and recall dependency. So we'll look on both of those ones. On the output, if you look, we have a custom dependency. Notice this, the custom dependency won't be in every um, object inside the view. For example, if we make a simple sphere, custom dependency won't be available there. So let's go ahead, right click, create output and create custom dependency. So this custom dependency will provide information from our object that we can use. For example, if we drag from simple terrain to custom dependency and connecting, now our output right here, this element will be available as altitude for other ones. Of course, we don't need to worry too much because altitude available anyway. So this way we can actually create something else that is not public property that available for other ones to use from our terrain and maybe use it. As example, let's do this way. We'll go inside here and we'll just go create the Rocky Mountain. Okay. We'll go to middle. Let's go to combiner, just simple blender. So we want to do very fancy things, but I want just you to see and we need input one and two. So we just mix those two together and we connect to altitude. At this point, altitude have a blend from both of us. But what if I want just create Rocky Mountain for some, for example, texture, so I can go connect to our my custom dependency and inside let's call it Rocky Mountain. Okay, at this point we can go ahead and save it. Let's open material editor and inside the material editor we can go create a new layer and let's switch this layer for example procedural colors and we'll just very fast just create some map so we can see it. Now we can go inside the alpha and let's add a function in function editor. So you'll notice right here we do apply constant color everything and we have it positioned from even our terrain. But what if I go in input external uh, property? Okay, and we do have an altitude that connect but external property we select and you notice we have a dependency, so we can click down, select object, for example, terrain two, it's what we have it. And notice we have a new one. We do have a position, annotation, size, all of this, but what we wanted is a Rocky Mountain. And this is the one that we created our custom. So now we want to actually take this external dependency and we can go and create, connect to the alpha, or we can also create 
or connect to transparency. It's up to you, whatever you want it. But you notice how it's changed. Now, this value, what we receive from Rocky Mountains, will control our terrain. So let's go take main camera, move slightly above, and look down. I don't think we'll have it very dramatic changes. Look a, a lot, but even in preview, you right now already can see. Let me expand this a little bit bigger. How it's changed, it's already applied. It's not just on a height, but it's using with that node. The benefits of using this, it's when you create snow mountains, you maybe create riverbed or other things, and you apply additional erosion, but you want overall material or other things, elements distributed based on a, a component that's not available as altitude. So you can play a little bit more with this and see how you can maybe integrate it inside of yours. Okay, notice what next we spoke about. We say about these external dependencies. So let's work a little bit with that. And for this one, we'll just go back to our material editor. Okay, let's go create a new material, a new layer, sorry, in our material. And we'll go and check our color and maybe switch to something like bright blue, something different so we can preview. Next, we we'll can go inside the alpha or whatever you like it. And again, I'm just using alpha just as example. And now you can see we have all of this different position, whatever, and this is applied directly just to this material. However, we could go inside the create external dependency and now we have the ability to assign. So what's happening if I going inside the sunlight and take on the position of the sunlight? Notice as a position sunlight, it's have it internal view units, but also position it's X, Y, Z. So if we roll over, you can see it says output vector. If I want to modify alpha of transparency of my material based on a sun position, then I need it extract. So for this, we're going to inside um, nodes. Okay, so actually let's go on this side. It will be easy to see. So we'll go inside the math. Let's expand math. And inside math, we have the vector operation. So we'll expand them. And a vector operation, what we want, we want the compressor. See, we have a compressor, decompressor. What they do, the compressor will take a vector output and split on X, Y, and Z. Compressor, X, Y, and so we have the same. Composer, it will take separate, take three amplitude amplitude and create a vector. So this way we can extract specific value. So I'm going and I'm going to click on there, create, add the compressor node and create external dependency to this. So on the end, if we expect, you can see we get X, Y, and Z. Notice if we go over, it will let us know what is output. But output, we have it on position. So it is on a V unit, if you remember what we have it. And this can be 1000 or whatever. So we, but if we look on a transparency example, it's rollover and it's very nice because it still has output expect number between minus one and one. So we need to map it. Remember, we have it in the filters. If we go down, we have it map. So let's go click on a map and we'll connect. For example, it doesn't matter this point because X will be one position and we can always preview. You can see right here we have the Z up. So let's go just use a Z value for this. Okay, let's position it back here. And we'll just take a Z, connect to our map. And inside our map, our input can be from zero and a V unit. Let's just for now set maybe 100. We'll see what this will be. An output range from minus one to one. So it's meaning when it's up, high altitude or this actually you know what let's go reverse let's go one to minus one so in this place position sun high or down 
it will be changed a little bit more transparent or less transparent. I think our maybe output is not yet. We maybe need to work a little bit more with these units, but it should work for now. Again, we'll just connect to Alpha and other ones. Let's click OK. And on a preview, and sometimes preview not necessarily will work very well, but we can see. Let's go bring down position of the sun. Okay, a little bit too low, maybe. Okay, like right here. And I think our actually size, let's select sun. Okay. And this is a little bit hard maybe with the sun to do. But point is if we go very high, we'll have the transparency a little bit more. Okay, let me go to the main camera and disable after exposure so we don't kind of mess up with that. And also what I said before with the sun, we maybe need to figure out if our hundred units it is high enough. But to easy preview this, if we take just a ball, so we'll create one ball right here, okay? And we'll just link that property that we have on material just to this ball. So let's go ahead, back to our function editor, and instead external dependency, extend sun position, we'll just switch to the sphere position same things and notice we have the external view units you know what let's go switch to the meters on this case it will be easy for us to track and now in a map we can just switch back to minus one which is transparent and one and it says lower value when we have it zero it will be should be transparent and let's go higher to 100 meters should be um, non-transparent so right here we have our ball selected and let's see what's happening if we drag all the way up. Okay, let's look on our object. Okay, and I'll we'll probably just need to bring a little bit more high up. And our mapping does not connect properly. So let's go ahead, look again on the terrain. And notice it's a black, so it's all transparent. Okay, now let's go ahead back to our sphere. Bring all the way down. And because we do with the Z, it will be closer. I think 100 meters maybe not enough. You can see it's already start getting bluish. And if we're getting closer, it's getting a little bit more blue. Probably, I think maybe 100 meters wasn't high enough and it's blue more. I think we needed to go back to terrain. And you know what? Let's go to edit function. And right here in the map, instead of 100 feet, let's go use a thousand. So we'll map it anyway from zero to thousand. I think that will be a little bit better because now we can take our sphere. And we have a wider range. Yeah, there you go. A little bit better. So you can see how we adjust. Same things. This is usually I do create like a sphere or other control objects. It's helped me a little bit more visual to see how a change occurred. And now when we map it with the size and everything, we can easy going and change this to the sunlight. So now we know what positioning and how high it is from 1000. So it's meaning if we our sphere will be height about here, it's almost disappear. So 1000 feet and our sun going right there. So it will be a little bit darker. Okay, so now we know position. Let's go back to terrain. We'll open our properties we'll go to edit function and right here except this one sphere we can go back to sunlight positioning and we'll leave it on a meters okay and let's do one more interesting things on a new layer 
we'll go present uh, chili effect and we'll go to pop up luminosity and let's pop up ambient and diffusion okay let's click ok and here's what interesting things happen if we go sun very up notice our terrain is normal not glowing but what's happening if we go all the way down our terrain should start glowing inside that way you can make like a fluorescence for example in the night you can add light that it turn automatically on based on position of your you can pl make a plants or fireflies or whatever you want it glow in a dark in automation as your sun going down you can see how it's more fun and playing with those external internal dependencies they are um, useful so we're almost done one more thing so i want to show you and actually just to kind of explain for that we need um, animations if you remember we have an other one dependency that is called um, a recall dependency so let's go right here so we have one external dependency and we have a recall dependency recall dependency is more will apply inside automation and it will take value before the change was applied so it will help with our automations system um, that work very well with object moving and we want to something affecting for example if i want to create a, a wave like maybe foam in a water after object moved by i will probably use it to recall dependency because that way i can follow the movements movements of the waves or movements of the object or other things so think about this um it's a little bit help you maybe external dependency it is at the moment and recall it's what was before so present and past um, it's a little bit more to this actually than this but that is simplification maybe just help you to distinguish a little bit at the beginning of those two okay go ahead and um, hopefully this will help you to kind of look on those external dependencies that they allowed you to take all these different properties in the object from different elements inside your scenery and link them together make them work together affecting when is one will affect another things okay thank you for watching this video hopefully you find it useful and if you like it please give a thumbs up or give me feedback on the youtube if you're watching there and uh, you always can support on the patreon it is geek at play and this is great appreciation for all your help and support so help me produce more videos like this thank you again and have a fun time